Hi guys and welcome back to Editor's Life and today we're going to create some glowing flickering neon text signs completely in Premiere Pro without the need for Photoshop or After Effects. Now for those of you without too much time on your hands, I am in the process of creating an unpaid and unbiased review of a, well spoiler alert, brilliant Premiere Pro extension plugin from a company called AE Juice that includes pretty much every plugin pack that they make for Premiere, one of which is an editable neon tiles pack. I've not quite finished the review yet but the bundle seems to be on a huge discount and it offers pretty much everything you could ever need to take your videos to the next level and I do find it a pretty useful and impressive editor's toolkit. So for those of you that would rather spend the next five or so minutes creating your own neon text title sequence project from scratch with me, we're going to make this render 1080p and since the logo essentially zooms into shot from behind the camera, it means we want to start with a larger 4K comp. So the first thing I'll do is open up Essential Graphics and then I'm going to press T on my keyboard to bring up the text tool. I'm going to type in Neon, change the size to 350 and then I'm going to use these two buttons to centre the font. The font I'm using is called Neon and it's from Defont and I'll put the colour code up on screen right now. You can use whatever font you like. I'll now click this little button to create another text layer and I'm going to drag it below and I'm going to type in Premiere Pro. For this I'm going to change the colour fill to blue. I'm going to resize it to about 130 and then I'll recenter it with these two align buttons again. Now all you need to do is drag it below the neon text layer. Now we'll go into our effects panel and we'll search for the apparently obsolete plugin called Bevel Alpha and we're going to drag this onto our text layer, change the edge thickness to 8, change the light angle to about 30 degrees and the intensity to 0.5. And with this we're now starting to see more of a 3D neon tube style light effect but there's a lot more we can do to this to make it look even better. We'll now add the first bit of animation to this before we start duplicating and adding the glows and flickers to the text. So to do this you want to go to the beginning of your timeline and under the motion scale, not the vector motion, scale all the way up to about 10,000 and set a keyframe. We'll now go to the 1 second mark and change the scale to 60, right click on the first keyframe and select ease out, right click on the second keyframe and select ease in, and this is how it's looking at the moment. Pretty rubbish but bear with me. The text probably ends up a little bit small at 60% but what we can do is go into the essential graphics panel and up the overall transform scale to whatever size we want and this won't affect the animation we've just done. For my text doubling the amount to about 200 would probably be a good scale and then I'll just nudge the text up a touch in the comp to properly centralise it. So Neon can go up to about 1200 and Premiere Pro to about 1500 and that should do it. Let's now extend the duration of this text intro to about 6 seconds. We'll move it up to layer 3 and then using Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, duplicate this layer by dragging a copy down to video layer 2. When neon signs are turned off, they're not totally invisible, they look more like a, a dimmed down version of the brighter colour that you see when they're lit up. So we'll select a paler pink and blue for our text that should look like it's been turned off. So I'll use this code for the pink and this colour code for the blue. The intro animation finishes around the one second mark, so just a frame beyond that we're going to start the flickering animations. This is a really simple bit of keyframing where we'll go to the neon text layer and under opacity, hit a keyframe for 100%, go forward two frames and change it to zero and then go forward two more frames and reset it to 100. Then we're going to go forward 10 or so more frames and we're going to repeat this process so the neon light tube flickers off twice. We'll do the same thing for the Premiere Pro text layer opacity but I'll make the gap between the two flickers slightly longer so there's a little bit more randomness to the animation. So let's start adding some blurry glows to this text. So duplicate layer 3 onto layer 4 by again holding Alt or Option on your keyboard and dragging upwards. Delete the bevel alpha effect and in your effects window select Gaussian Blur and turn it up to about 350. Now we don't want to see a completely pink screen at the beginning so we'll set a keyframe on the blur at around 1 second and then if we pull back to the 10 frame mark we'll animate that down to 0. If you want to increase the neon light spread a little bit more as the logo comes in we'll make another duplicate so we'll hold Alt or Option again and drag a copy of video layer 4 onto layer 5 but this time we're going to turn the brightness down to about 150. Alright so we've only got three steps left until we're done. We need to create a border around the neon sign, we need to place a background image and then we're going to animate the camera so it rotates into its final position. So for the graphic we're going to duplicate the first neon text layer on video layer 2 and we're going to duplicate that onto video layer 6 by holding all our option. We're going to delete the two text layers and then we'll create a rectangular shape with the scale amount of 200. 
The width at about 1110 and the height about 550. We can round off the edges by selecting this option and making it about 100. I'm just going to click on the graphic layer itself and change the height to about 1070 just to centralise it a little bit better over the logo. Because the shape layer uses a stroke instead of a fill, changing the colour can be quite tricky if you also want to add some blur effects, so what we'll use instead of the Gaussian Blur is an effect called VR Glow. The settings that work well for me were 0% Luma, 30% Glow Radius, Brightness at 1, Saturation at 10, and we'll change the tint colour by clicking this box and making it yellow. And you also want to go to your video motion tab and change the rotation to minus 6. We're almost there, so let's add a background image in before we do the camera animation. And for this, I've found a free image that you can use that's linked in the description. It's a little bit bright at the moment, so we'll need to stylize the grade a little bit. Drag the image onto video layer 1. Copy the same minus 6% rotation that the logo has and scale the image up to about 102% to fill the frame. We're going to suck a lot of the light and colour out of this image by pushing these curves almost all the way to the bottom right. In the basic corrections, minus 0.3 for exposure. Contrast can go up to about 80. And in the creative tab, move the vibrance and saturation all the way to the left, so minus 100 and 0. We want to start this animation on a completely black or transparent background, so We'll fade the image in quickly just as the logo wipes into frame. And then last but not least, we're going to animate the camera so that it rotates into its final position. To do this, we're going to select all of the layers, right click and choose Nest to group all of our layers together. We're just going to call this Nest for now and resize it to 1080p. Right click and select Delete all tracks that you're not using just to tidy up these layers a little bit and then scale this nested composition down to about 50% to fill the frame. We're going to set a keyframe on rotation, go to the last frame and we'll change this to 65% scale, and a rotation of about 6% should bring us back level. I know this has been a pretty long one full of effects and settings, but this is just what I came up with and what works for me. You can try different colours, different animations, different settings on your effects, and come up with a bunch of variations on this effect pretty quickly. Hopefully you did find this useful, if you did a like on this video would really help out the channel and there's tons more contents coming like this soon and a few other editing related reviews or videos so if that's something that interests you feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.